There is no greater hell than to be a prisoner of fear. Ben Jonson, English playwright. Is my mum a prisoner? Backstory. In the late 1940s, around age 7 or 8, my mum became very sick. She was hospitalised for months at a time. At first she was in the same town as her family, so they could visit her regularly, but later she had to be transported to Brisbane for expert treatment. As my grandmother was a widow and had five other children to take care of, she could rarely visit my mum. My grandfather had died young. He used to work at an abattoir, but was kicked in the head by a steer. A few days later, he dropped dead playing cricket. Perhaps that's why I have an aversion to meat. My mum would go for many weeks without seeing any of her family, isolated within the bleak, sterile environment of the hospital. They told her and her mother that it was unlikely she would survive. They said that she'd be lucky to see ten. Naturally, she developed a fear of doctors and the medical environment. She has suffered with white coat syndrome all her life. In the 1950s, she got out of hospital, but was told that she'd be lucky to see age 20. This went on her entire life, constantly told by doctors that she would die, but she didn't. Seventy years later, in around July 2021, my mum was living by herself, but started to have falls. She never injured herself, but had to keep ringing me up to go help her stand up. In October 2021, she called me up and told me she couldn't get into the house. I was a bit confused why she was outside, but didn't rush over because she seemed fine on the phone. When I arrived about 40 minutes later, I found her in a chair outside in the hot sun, unresponsive. I called the ambulance and they took a long time to arrive. When they did arrive, there was only one paramedic. He said it's a nightmare trying to find staff at the moment. Anyway, that night, my mum was told that she wouldn't make it through the night. She was diagnosed with multiple infections and they told me her lungs were failing. She was put on a respirator, but it wasn't working. The emergency doctor advised me that the best course of action would be to take her off the respirator, which was only causing her discomfort, and let her pass peacefully using things like morphine to keep her calm. But when they took her off the respirator and told her that they were going to give her some morphine, she came to and said, I don't want no bloody morphine. Due to the hospital being full, there were no cases of COVID at that time, mind you, she was moved to another hospital where she was expected to die. I would take the kids up there to see her, as they still wanted to have Friday pizza nights with their grandmother. I was told by a number of doctors that she was dying and that she'd be lucky to see it through the night. This went on and on, but she never died. This is a picture of my wife and I with my mum for her 80th birthday. Bans and lockdowns. Finally, a nursing home placement came up a few weeks later in early November 2021. The nursing home wouldn't allow me to enter because I wasn't vaccinated against the flu, but I was able to see my mum in the garden. On November 5th, the, go the government abandoned that direction and I was allowed to freely visit my mum. Apparently the regular flu was no longer an issue. On December 17th, I was again banned from going inside the nursing home because a new government direction stated that only people vaccinated against COVID could enter aged care facilities. I was promised by the staff though that I would be able to continue seeing my mum in the garden. I went to visit her on December 20th, but then the staff told me that I wasn't even allowed on the grounds and asked me to leave. Apparently there was a new direction. I phoned the manager and he worked something out for me. I could go collect my mum in a wheelchair and wheel her off the grounds, and that would be fine. So on December 23rd, I met with my mum for the last time. I wheeled her to the nearby park and we had a great chat. She saw her grandchildren and met with her unvaccinated friends who I had called prior. She was happy to be out in the fresh air and sunshine. December 27th. Lockdown. A staff member tested positive for COVID, remembering all staff members must be fully vaccinated, and the facility went into lockdown. No visitors were allowed regardless of vaccination status. We were told that it might last 10 or so days depending on test results, but then another staff member tested positive a few days later. The lockdown clock was reset. A few days went by and we were finally told that they were planning to open up on Friday the 7th of January 2022 today. 
but then I got a late night email last night stating that a resident had tested positive and lockdown would start again. I've tried ringing the facility, but the phone, the phone lines are dead or engaged. Obviously, for me it's my mum, for others it's their husband or wife who is in the facility. I know a number of them who used to visit their spouse at least five days a week. They've gone from doing that to not being able to see their loved ones at all. Prison life and mental health crisis. My mum is now a prisoner. She's not allowed to leave her room, and nobody's allowed to go in to see her, except for medical professionals. She's allowed to phone out, and she had been calling me fairly regularly up until recently, but then the phones started to go dead. A couple of days ago, she tried to call me three times, but I could only hear static. I contacted the manager of the facility, and he told me that so many people are trying to call in and out that all the cordless phones are being overused and running out of power. He arranged for me to have a Zoom session with my mum on one of the nurse's iPads. I spoke with my mum and she's really been struggling mentally. She's been having panic attacks, she's been having extreme anxiety, she can't leave her room, she can barely talk to the staff because when they enter her room they are covered head to toe in hazmat suits or whatever. They simply don't have the time to stay and chat like they used to. I've informed the facility manager about my mum's mental health decline, and they said they're trying everything to keep the residents in high spirits, but it's a mammoth task. They're short on staff because every second staff member is in isolation due to many of them being considered close contacts. They've arranged for mum to see a counsellor, and a doctor will be coming in to prescribe some anti-anxiety medication, but is that an adequate response? Medicate the residents so that the lockdown doesn't destroy them mentally? Is escape a solution? I've spoken with my mum's friends, and we've considered breaking her out, tongue-in-cheek. Now, of course, she isn't legally a prisoner. If she really insisted on leaving, and I vouched for her, they couldn't not let her leave. But if she did leave, she wouldn't be allowed back, at least not while the facility is in lockdown. But realistically, we honestly don't have anywhere to keep her. She needs round-the-clock care, something which I can't provide. I've got my own children to look after, and my wife works very odd hours. I'm trying my best to keep in contact with my mum and keep her spirits up, but realistically, if the rules don't change, my mum will be in a permanent lockdown. There will always be a close contact or a case that pops up keeping the lockdown going. Remembering, all of these government rules are designed to keep our senior citizens safe. But in the process, by locking them in their rooms 24 hours a day, they're completely destroying them mentally. Sure, they don't have COVID, but at what cost? No visitors, no leaving your room, no hugs from loved ones, no hugs full stop. Our COVID rules were designed to protect our loved ones from illness. But in the end, we've substituted physical illness with mental illness instead. In prison, inmates are allowed to go out of their cells and exercise. Our locked-down aged care residents can't even do that.